Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to show you how to hook up your Innovate Wideband to your ECU so that you can get better tuning. Uh, so yeah, the wideband is back here. It is right behind the oil pan, pointed straight up. So in between the motor brace that goes up and down, or the, sorry, the cross member deal at the firewall that goes straight up and down and the oil pan it's pointed straight up and then the wires come up and goes through a grommet in the firewall so I already have it wired up I have one of these gauge pod deals so my wide bands on that side I got a boost gauge right there I already have the wire running down here near the ECU the signal wire so what I'm gonna do is show you guys uh, which pin and how I'm hooking it up and obviously people are gonna say different things about the wiring blah 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 but uh, there's a couple good ways to do it since this is not under the hood and in the elements and everything don't worry I'm not using butt connectors so let me get a light and the tools and so these are the tools you're gonna need electrical tape which I don't really need but I'm gonna use it uh, you're gonna need Gara of the sand, <laughs> some strippers, crimpers, and I'm using these style crimps because you twist the wires together and then this just crimps them together and then I tape them off to hold them in place but um, these crimps work very very well and then a pair of dykes. So here's the wire I have coming down from my dashboard I have my LC controller way it's if you go behind here it's uh, stuffed in there it fits fine it's one of the newer models so it's a little bit smaller but anyways here's the signal wire the signal wire on the harness I believe is yellow uh, I had white wire so there's white wire so first thing now we need to do to even do any of this remove these panels which just has a screw here and a clip or a screw in the back pull the panel out and then we're gonna unplug the ECU now that the ECU is unplugged I'm gonna take off these little bits of tape here 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 pretty much everything from this big bundle so that I can get in see the color wire find the pins make sure when you trim your signal wire now you have a little bit of slack so that you can run it around um, all the little areas so you're not confined to stretching it tight or fucking it up. Here are the pinouts. The connector viewed looking into the ECU. Okay. So I am using the O2 sensor rear plug or signal pin. I still have my O2 sensor in the back plugged in, so this means that I can't have them uh, piggybacked. So what I'm going to do when I show you, I'm going to snip the rear, then cap it, and then wire my wire into the connector. Then if I ever want to put it back to stock, I just remove the cap and put the stock O2 back uh, to the connector. So it won't be that big of a deal. So I learned something new. The O2, these are the two O2 sensors here in the green. They were wrapped in this tape. And so I'm assuming that was a factory tape job. Um, so they're actually twisted shielded pair. So you have this one. The light's a little too bright, huh? You have this right here which is attached to the shield and that goes to ground then you have the actual uh, ground signals for the sensor and then the two white ones are the hot signals um, so <clears throat> according to this pin 75 starts so that starts from this side which is brown yellow red blue light green black and then there's an empty spot 
Then 75, which is the O2 sensor rear, is the next one. So that means going from the brown yellow, the first yellow, I'm sorry, the first white is the rear O2. So I cut the wire, I left two inches from the connector to make my life easier. And then I just put a crimp cap over the signal coming from the rear. Uh, that way I can reuse it later if I wanna take the Innovate out. Or I can just leave it and it's safe, it's not gonna short on anything, so everybody's in a good mood. Strip a little over a quarter of an inch on the main wire. Strip the secondary wire roughly uh, three-eighths or a half an inch. Then you're gonna spiral the second wire around the main wire. After you twist the wires, put the crimp cap on and you're gonna start, you crimp it at the very bottom, then lift your crimpers and put a second crimp up top. That means uh, you have a full quarter of an inch of overlapped wire crimped together. So there's no chance that it could ever pull out or anything. Then now we're just gonna tidy it up with electrical tape. Then we're gonna go into ECM link and turn this bad boy on in the ECU and I'll show you how to do that. This is what my harness looks like now, all cleaned up. I'm gonna have this one wire that goes up in the dash. So all I gotta do now is plug it in and put these plastic panels back. So to turn this thing on, you're gonna go to uh, ECU Live then you're gonna come down here to rear row two. You're gonna click on this. Now you're gonna look for LC1 wideband. Click on that. Save pin assignment. Now you're gonna go down here. You're gonna select rear row two for wideband, then you're gonna save it. Now we're gonna click on captured values, and then we're gonna go down to the middle of the screen. We're gonna, I believe it should be labeled LC1. Yeah, here it is. LC1 wideband. Add that to device. So now that'll capture that when you're doing data logs, so you can pay the fuck attention. Go ahead, click on NBO2 SIM, and you're gonna come up here, enable narrowband simulation. I have my delay for the wideband set to 15 seconds. That gives the wideband time to dial in. So I added right here to the data log, LC1 wideband, and then that is affecting the AFR ratio estimate, which is the narrow band. And the narrow band's a square wave now, from when it switches. The LC1 uh, wideband is gonna look more like a little curve going like this. I hope this video helped you guys out. The installation of the actual O2 sensor should just be as easy as reading the instructions that come with it. So, until next time, wrench on, guys.